Hi, it's Dwyer. It is Thursday, April 14th, 2012. Right before the Errol Spence, your Dennis Ugas fight. Right? A couple days before. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about some of the comments made by the fighters. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, in boxing, the fight starts before the fight. You're seeing that here, right? The fighters will talk a good game before the fight. Part of that talk is strategic. They want to mislead the opponent. They want the opponent to think they're going to pursue a certain strategy when they have other plans. I believe you have that here. Right now, let me say, I am um, on YouTube here. I saw a great interview of Errol Spence, where Spence openly talked about how he felt he was on borrowed time. Now, that's significant because Spence, of course, has had the major car accident. It's on film, right? His Ferrari is flipping. Had they told you after that crash that Errol Spence's career had ended or that his life had ended, you would have believed it. The crash is that horrific. He's also had, of course, major eye surgery. Anytime you hear that a retina is detached or torn, folks, that's major eye surgery. That is endangering the fighter's career. Right, so let's be let's be clear here. Here I am with food on my beard. My bad. Well, let's just be clear here. Let's just be clear here. Errol Spence is an older fighter who knows he's an older fighter. Right, Errol Spence understands, as he put it in another interview, that at this stage in his career, the paydays matter. There's a certain urgency with Errol Spence right now. Well, as you can imagine, after he made the statement that he felt he was on borrowed time, a couple days later, suddenly I see a new set of Errol Spence interviews where Errol Spence is talking about how he's rejuvenated, right? How he plans to fight for a while. I get the feeling there are people in the background, people off the screen that we're not seeing who told him, hey, man, you, you can't be here talking about how you're on borrowed time. That might encourage your opponent. Right? That might encourage not just this opponent. That might encourage other boxers, Terrence Crawford, whoever, off stage to come fight you right now and to fight you a certain way. So now we get the new Errol Spence comments, right? Oh, he's ready. Oh, he's thirsty, etc. Then we got the last set where he talks about that you got to either eat or get eaten, right? He used different words, but basically he's saying he's coming to knock out Ugas. Right, folks? With all due respect to Errol Spence, a tremendous fighter, Right? Many of you feel he's the best at 147, and that's saying a lot. But I'm not buying it. I believe the real Errol Spence is the one who understands he's lucky to be alive. I believe the real Errol Spence is the one who spoke privately with the doctor who understands that retinal tears have ended careers in boxing. Who may have taken his eyes for granted before, but now is not. Right, I believe the real Errol Spence looks on the calendar and he realizes he's in his 30s right now. So understand this fight. I'm picking Ugas in the fight, by the way, right? But understand this fight. Spence is excellent 
when he's on his front foot demolishing guys. The Chris Algieri fight is a must-watch if you're an Errol Spence fan. Right? Spence hits hard. Spence is aggressive. Spence is accurate. Spence is going for the KO. But that Errol Spence hasn't existed for some time, has he? Worse. Ugas is exactly the kind of fighter who thrives off negative energy. What do I mean by that? Think about Ugas against Sean Porter. A guy who's front foot heavy, episodic, aggressive. That fight could have gone either way, folks. Ugas knocks Porter down late in that fight. Look at the film. It's a knockdown. It's not a slip. Sean Porter doesn't decide to lay on the canvas voluntarily. Right? That's a knockdown. Wasn't scored as a knockdown. They foolishly rule that a slip. Sean Porter, very aggressive. Manny Pacquiao. Southpaw, like Errol Spence. Very aggressive. Don't buy all these statements people are making. Among them, Errol Spence that Pacquiao was well past his expiration date. Wasn't this the same Pacquiao who in a recent fight knocked down and beat Keith Thurman? Folks, you looked at Manny and Manny still had the hand speed. Right? We know Manny had enough power to knock down Keith Thurman. No, Manny was in with a defensive wizard. That's who Ugas is, who is at his best when an opponent is trying to crash the pocket, right? Some guys thrive on being alpha. Other fighters thrive on being beta. Ugas is a beta. Ugas's game is tailor-made for Errol Spence on his front foot. This is not going to be Spence cutting down a tree if he decides to go front foot. This is going to be Spence walking into traps. So let's talk about a distinct possibility in this fight. Because Ugas thrives on negative energy, right? You know, he's the defensive guy. You're trying to find him, right? He wants you to try to find him. Think Pernell Whitaker, right? He wants you to try to find him. He's not the guy, when the bell sounds, who comes looking for you, right? Let me back up a bit. In fairness to Pernell, check out the Roger Mayweather fight where Pernell is on his front foot in that fight. Right? But understand, Ugas wants you to come looking for him. So Sean Porter and Manny Pacquiao played into his game. Right, They came looking for him. Ugas is clear-headed, knows where to put his head, knows how to counter you, knows how to get you to move into his punches. Knows how to step forward after he's hurt you. Now, one of the amazing things, it shocked me at the time, it shocks me today, is the fact that as good as Errol Spence is on his front foot, Errol Spence is actually a switch. Since he's fighting a guy who's 5'9", right, Ugas is not Sebastian Fundora, right? Ugas is 5'9", and since Ugas is more back foot than front foot, there's a possibility that Errol Spence, fresh off eye surgery, is going to be back foot himself in this game. I don't think he goes for the knockout against Ugas. If he does... He might get stopped. I mean, let's just be blunt here. If he does, 
he'll be walking into the best part of Ugas's game. I believe Spence is actually going to try to fight the fight he fought against Mikey Garcia. Spence might want Ugas, who's more beta, to play the alpha role in this fight. Right? The idea is, look, man, if you can't get by my jab, you're going to be losing these rounds. I can keep you at the end of a jab and win rounds on the scorecard. I don't care what the guys say before the fight. Now, I believe Ugas, by the way, is being up front when he says, hey, you know, come after me. You know, oh, you want to come try to find me? Hey, go ahead and do it, because that's his game. Right? That's who he is. So, there's going to be an element of surprise in this. Fight fans need to understand, though, that the A games are complementary. If Spence comes in and says, hey, I'm going to try to treat you like I treated Chris Algieri. I'm going to try to treat you like I treated Kel Brook. I'm going to be heavy-handed, on my front foot, throwing bombs. Just understand there's the opposite side of the coin there. A guy who has made his career taming hyper-aggressive lions. Right? That fight is highly competitive. That fight isn't reflected in the betting spread. Right? Mark my words. I think this is going to be a year of upsets. Sorry, Dylan White, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about Bevel, the opponent for Canelo. I think he beats Canelo. I'm talking about Ugas here. I think he beats Errol Spence. Right? If Spence is on his back foot, let's talk about that. You know, the back foot isn't cowardice. Only the bravest, only the most prepared get on their back foot because the back foot requires movement and timing. Right? You're backing away from a guy. You want to make sure you don't back in the corner. By the way, Sean Porter gets... Errol Spence up on the ropes. Look at the placement in that fight. Now let's just say Spence is an older fighter. Do you think that Spence, who in my opinion didn't look that inspired against Danny Garcia, do you think that Spence, post-car crash and post-eye surgery, is going to have a-plus timing and is going to feel comfortable on his back foot against this opponent. Right? Ugas might be cautious on his front foot, at least he is in my eyes. But he's going to realize that he's not facing, in my opinion at least, 100% of Errol Spence. Let me tell you, it's disturbing when a guy's in his 30s and Spence, who's very honest in a lot of interviews, openly talks about how weight, Google this, has always been a big issue with him. So now he's trying something different. He has hired a nutritionist. Is this the kind of news you want to hear before a big fight where the guy is fresh off eye surgery? Is it? How many fights? has Errol Spence had since the big car crash. Right? I'm just not sure if this Spence is the Spence who fought Mikey Garcia. Right? Spence has a back foot game. I concede that. Spence has a very good jab. I concede that. Spence is a master at knowing where he is in the ring. I concede all of that. 
major car crash, eye surgery, Manny Pacquiao cancellation. Now he's in against the guy who is underrated. Understand. Some of the losses on Ugas' record could easily have gone the other way. Right? Ugas has a superstar trainer. He has a great background, right? Boxer came up in the Cuban boxing system. Let's just say you know Ugas is ready to bring his A game. I know he's older, but you know he's ready and very adept and accomplished on his back foot. So much so that if I were Errol Spence's trainer, right, who, by the way, is himself a superstar trainer, the trainer of Jamel Charlo is Errol Spence's trainer. If I were his trainer, I would say, hey, let's make sure that you bank some rounds on your back foot. Let's keep this guy confused. Let's have him try to look for you. Let's move him off his spot. Let's not make this the Manny Pacquiao fight, where Pacquiao's constantly jumping in, and Ugas was able to set up shop. Let's force him to reach for you so he's not able to hit you in the body like he hit Manny Pacquiao in the body. But understand, folks, the back foot isn't running. That's a fight style that requires a lot. Right? They claim, by the way, that in the first uh, Ezard Charles, Rocky Marciano fight, think about how aggressive lead puncher Marciano was, that Ezard Charles's back never touched the ropes for something like the first 14 rounds. Right? The guys who can play a back foot game need to be alert they need to be a matador even when they're hurt they can't go straight back they need to figure out the punch pattern of an opponent Errol Spence had eye surgery folks do you know with certainty whether Errol Spence's vision right now is 2020 Errol Spence just had a major car accident car flips several times he suffered injuries you don't think his perception of the importance of boxing hasn't changed I'm a skeptic I like Ugas in this fight don't be surprised if after all the big talk Errol Spence is trying to move away from Ugas and is trying to fight on his back foot Right? I'm just saying a back foot game is hard for guys in their 30s, especially when their switches, when arguably the best part of their game is them on their front foot. I'm not buying the pre fight interviews. Right? I heard Freddie Roach give an interview on the fight. Right? A lot of people like Spence in the fight, including Freddie Roach. And Freddie, and that interview is on YouTube, right? I'm just a YouTube viewer like everyone else. In that interview, Freddie picks Errol Spence in the fight and talks about Spence's game as if, as if, Spence hasn't had a major car crash and Spence hasn't had eye surgery. Let me just ask you, if you had a son or if you're younger a brother, and they show up for Thanksgiving dinner after the car crash Errol Spence had. Wouldn't you be looking at that guy and saying, hey, Junior, are you all right? Every time the kid moves, wouldn't you say, hey, let me get that chair for you? You know, if you see Junior getting up to, you know, adjust the TV, you'd say, hey, hey, I got it. Don't worry about it, player. I Hey, you're home with family now. Hey, it's okay. Just relax. Now, let's say the next year, the guy comes home after having eye surgery. Wouldn't you be talking to his mother and say, hey, let's not have a lot of bright lights in this room. 
Right, hey, hey, is is that light too bright? Well, understand. Errol Spence isn't sitting down to watch TV here. Errol Spence is fighting a guy who arguably beat Sean Porter, certainly knocks down Sean Porter late in that fight, and beats Manny Pacquiao. Not only that, Ugas, again, back foot heavy. But Ugas knows. This is the problem with competitive sports. Ugas knows. Spence just had eye surgery. How many shots to Spence's eye do you think Ugas is going to take in this fight? Let's face it, too. Sparring isn't exactly a real fight. Right? I'm just telling you, I watched the fight in the 80s, and Ray Leonard had a swollen eye at the end of the fight. Then, of course, they told you later that Ray Leonard had detached his retina. We all thought his career was over. This was that era where they were starting to be able to reattach retinas and allow fighters to continue fighting. But when you saw Ray Leonard fights after that, you were always conscious of Ray's eye. Always conscious of it. Right now, I know some fighters have come back from eye surgery and have gone on and done some great things. Abner Maris. Right? But I'm just telling you there's a cover-up going on. Your eye's not 2020. It's not the same. You're in there with blurred vision. Not only that, you start to get tired, and guess what? That eye is the weak link in your physical system. You start to get tired, that eye starts to get really tired. How many fights has Errol Spence had after major eye surgery? Folks, this is a major fight against a man with a title. Right? Spence is in his 30s. He doesn't want to take tune-up fights. I don't blame him. Right? Because really, in boxing at certain levels, there is no such thing as a tune-up fight. But understand, there's uncertainty here. You don't know how Spence is going to react to getting hit in the eye. You just don't. Let me just say this, too. Google this. Lehman Brewster a guy who beat Vladimir Klitschko, a former heavyweight champion, went blind in one eye during a fight. We also overlook the mental part of the whole exercise. Calvin Brock against Vladimir Klitschko. In fact, might be against somebody else, but he fought Vladimir Klitschko. Hurt his eye had eye problems. Folks, by his own admission, Calvin Brock then started having mental health challenges because of his concern that he had gone from superstar athlete to a guy with vision problems. Right now, I know old school, we don't even want to admit there are things like mental health challenges. Right? You have a whole group out there saying, hey, why isn't Ben Simmons playing? He's getting paid, isn't he? Right, But if you're Errol Spence, and let's say in the fourth round, you realize you're no longer Errol Spence. At a minimum, your vision is different. Let's say you get hit in the eye, and you, know, you get hit in the good eye, sometimes you see stars. Right? Let's say he gets hit, he sees little stars, and he panics. He thinks, oh man, that's my bad eye. Right, folks, <laughs> Spence is the big favorite in this fight. Obviously, the people setting this line have never had eye problems. Obviously, the people setting this line have no doubt that Errol Spence is going to have no doubt against a guy who just beat Manny Pacquiao, who had just beaten Keith Thurman. Let's stop kidding ourselves. Also, it goes without saying, Spence does not have the hand speed of Manny Pacquiao. If people are going to claim that Pacquiao was washed up when he fought Ugas, please tell me how you could look at that film and reach any conclusion other than the fact that 
Manny Pacquiao today has faster hands than Errol Spence. I like Ugas in this. I'm expecting the upset. Right? Understand, I don't believe Spence can get the early KO in this fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Play with the over. In other words, I don't see Spence getting an early stoppage. I believe Spence's best chance of winning this fight is on his back foot in a boxing match, not a fight. Right? I'm taking the underdog here. I'll hedge it with the over. That's how I see it right now when I hear that a guy in his 30s has decided to get a nutritionist. Hey, it's too late. Understand, you're either a freak athlete who prioritizes, prioritizes their athleticism from a young age or you're not. Just ask yourself, how has it worked out for the other fighters you know who did not get a nutritionist until they were in their early 30s? I like Ugas to win. I'll hedge to play with the over. Understand it's all gravy if Ugas wins this fight late. He knocked down Sean Porter late. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.